Okay, we'll make a last short comment about the binding energy to a black of an object, the binding, uh, <coughs> binding energy of an object to a black hole. Uh, a black hole is massive and it's compact, so therefore you will have a part, object will have a large binding energy. The question is how how large the binding energy will be. <laughs> Uh, we call the orbit equation uh, when we talk about Mercury precessions for object with mass is the uh, uh, radial rotation of kinetic energy and, uh, and the and the effective potential which involves gravitational potential and uh, the orbital uh, uh, rotation of kin kinetic energy and the GR correction term. Now, uh, so, so Newtonian is just, just without this term, so the effective potential for Newtonian potential would be just like this, okay, so you have a, an orbit can be in a stable orbit in the minimal. And uh, in the GR case, because this term dominates at the small r, uh, you have this term, and then, so if any uh, can overcome the barrier, it can plunge right into the black hole. Uh, so anyway, we can have a stable circular orbit around at this point here, r minus. Uh, this circular radius cannot be arbitrarily small in order to have an uh, orbit any kind, uh, not just plunge directly into the black hole. A particle must have enough angular momentum, okay, uh, to create sufficient centripetal barrier. Okay, and you can work out the the. The, you must have at least this amount of orbital angular momentum, uh, L naught, and also this corresponds to the radius uh, R naught. Okay, so this is uh, the smallest uh, circular orbits for an object P, and of course, if it's a circular orbit, uh, R dot is equal to zero. So therefore, the the total energy is simply the uh, mass times the uh, effective potential. And you plug this L naught and R naught. R naught okay, should be lowercase really here. Uh, this factor become minus mc divided by 18. So the solution gives the total energy of a gravitational bound particle. Remember, the gravitational bound gravitational energy of a particle is kappa, okay, which is related to. Uh, E over mc, so cap over c is e over mc square, and uh, knowing the uh, the script e is minus mc over 18, you plug in here, this becomes factor minus 1 over 9, and then so so is, is inside square root is 8 over 9, take the square root, be 0.94. So in other words, the, here is the energy of a particle bound to a, a to a black hole with uh, in this small circular orbit, which which means that uh, you see it's less than one, so it's eight percent less. So eight percent is the uh, rest energy will, will be released when bound into a circular orbit like this. Now you see, all oh, eight per six percent is not that big. We have to realize, compare the thermonuclear reactions. You know, we should know that's the big, most efficient way of converting uh, rest energy. So think about thermonuclear reaction taking place inside the sun can be summarized as fusing four protons into a helium nucleus with a rest energy of uh, a release energy of 27 uh, MeV mega electron volt, which means since four each each proton has a rest energy uh, 938 MeV, so four of them, so that's the total input initial energy. Now you can release 27, so that it's about to less than 1%. You can point some. So therefore, uh, the black hole binding energy is almost 10 times bigger than this. So 10 times more efficient than the thermonuclear reaction. Now, we're talking about uh, Schwarzschild, which is a static, it's non-rotating black hole. You can work out for black hole rotation, it's even more, something as, as much as 42% uh, can be released, so it's huge amount of energy can be uh, 
extremely efficient way of releasing the rest of energy of, of an object. So here's the takeaway from this lecture number 18. Uh, uh, we first said the Schwarzschild surface is a coordinate singularity. It's, it's not a physical singularity because you make physical measurements, for example, measure time across the, uh, the Schwarzschild surface. It's perfectly smooth. It doesn't blow up. Okay. However, the elapsed time according to a far away clock, but you should take the coordinate time, blows up. Okay. No signal can be passed out from the Schwarzschild surface to the far to the far away observer. So we say this is an event horizon. You cannot you cannot communicate uh, beyond this event horizon. You cannot see anything beyond the uh, event horizon. Uh, Basically saying that we learned that Schwarzschild surface is a one-way barrier. Uh, this can be due to the fact that light cone tips over because sign change of the metric function. Okay. From light cone pointing to the ever larger time to point to R equals zero singularity. Uh, now, uh, we worry about because this is uh, first we've seen the Schwarzschild coordinates it becomes singular at this, so you're not worried whether you can draw any conclusions. But we can find a better behave uh, coordinates, like Eddington coordinates, and it, it, so the light comes tip over smoothly, so we can see this is really is true. Okay. Now, uh, also we can see this is a one-way barrier by the fact that the Schwarzschild surface is a no surface, it's light-like surface, so therefore it's on the side of a light cone. And from this, we can conclude that any world I'm passing through uh, must be pointing one way yeah, for black holes inward, for a white hole pointing outward. By the way, again, we we're talking about, remember we talked about why we study uh, space time di diagram because it gives us a better picture of the causal structure. And the light cones, all these, is that make it easy to see what's positive, what's causal. Okay, that's the reason we're using light cones space time diagrams to talk about all totally. And we also mentioned the binary energy of black hole can be extremely large. It was energy any object bound to black hole can be as much ten times larger than the thermal nuclear energy released from a, uh, but this is for a non rotating black hole. For a rotating black hole this can be 70, 80 times larger than the, uh, nuclear fusion energy. For now, all these black hole we talk about is something theoretical. So we wonder whether this uh, can be realized in in astrophysical settings. So we're going to talk about astro astrophysical black holes, uh, more risk models, and also black hole in our universe. And then we go on to a, a different topic, find that the mysterious correspondence between the laws of black hole mechanics and law of thermodynamics. And that will eventually lead to what we talk about Hawking radiation. Okay. So this is the end of this part. <clears throat>